So this is the unboxing of a brand new Ly Nielsen dovetail saw. These have uh, curly maple handles, so it should be pretty, very pretty solid. And here we go. This is the tapered dovetail saw. Oh, I thought it was curly maple, I guess it's just regular maple maybe. Not a lot of figuring, but nevertheless, a real quality tool. Look at that. This uh, handle is actually a lot smaller than I expected it to be. I, from the videos and pictures I've seen before, it looked like a little bit bigger handle, but it does fit very comfortably, even though I have kind of big hands. Gives you a place here to stick your uh, index finger out, you know, which a lot of people do, I suppose. And the reason I opted for the tapered one is because um, we kind of have a habit of pulling the saw back a little bit when I'm sawing because I use a lot of uh, Japanese saws like uh, Ryoba, one of my favorites. And uh, for that reason, I've kind of got a habit of, you know, pulling the saw back a little bit or adjusting it so that I don't cut over the line on the reverse side. This ought to make it a little bit easier. Um, let's see here. So you got a little over a quarter. All right, so my phone fell on me. Here we got a little over one and a quarter inch here. One and three eighths about. And then one and a half down the taper here. 15 peep, teeth per, 15 teeth per inch here so uh, this should do the trick usually um, I'll use a dovetail guide something like uh, one of these and I'll just kind of get it started and then once I've got it lined up and the cut straight then I'll just finish the rest by hand so uh, I've got uh, I've got a Jorberg's little Jorberg's works bench here, and uh, we'll do a quick test cut, and then I'll show you some dovetails I'll make with it. So stand by. So I'm going to demonstrate by cutting a little box joint, um, and uh, basically this is. A test piece of stained dash for a um, for a shelf that I'm making a dovetail shelf. So we'll see how well this um, this uh, saw cuts. A lot of people use uh, like walnut. Okay, another interruption here, but I guess we'll do kind of a bonus uh, video here because I just got a uh, little delivery. So, open it up and see what we got. And so to be... Perfect timing, because uh, was going to cut kind of a little box joint with this uh, thing, but I just got my magnetic 
magnetic God I can't speak today I just got my magnetic uh, dovetail guide from David Barron comes with uh, some extra adhesive um, film here I guess to protect uh, the guide from getting scratched a lot more solid than the other ones I bought off of Amazon so maybe better quality these days I've been using 1.6 um, I mean one six one eight for a long time those two but uh, recently I kind of prefer a much narrower angle for dovetails so I went with the one four which is 14 degrees I believe so let's Check it out real quick. I better secure my fourth piece. Cut about to the depth of to the depth of this blade, just uh, for a test. These are some really, really clean cuts. Wow, I like it a lot. Um, to be honest with you, I mean, look how clean those cuts are. <clears throat> and this is, this ash is pretty hard wood. This test uh, piece I'm building a cabinet from. Um, this ash here is a pretty tough wood. It's been a real tough wood to work with. Uh, tougher than most ashes I've been using lately. <clears throat> I don't know if uh, it's from a different region or what, but wow, it really is really clean. I mean, I'll show you just how clean this cut is with this western saw. Watch this. This is a uh, <clears throat> Dozuki saw here, right? And has a really fine curve on it. And with these, you get incredibly clean cuts, but I mean, we'll see. So as you can see, though, uh, the curve is narrower. The cut is uh, just as clean as the Dozuki. And it cuts pretty fast. I mean, I, I'm not used to this, so I've never used that. And I haven't used this guide, so um, I think I've already kind of given a little nick here. But I'm sure once I get used to it, it'll uh, work out fine. But wow, I really like the cuts on this. Really good. And I'll show you why this is important, why it makes a difference. Now, I've got here a Veritas ripping saw, okay? This is a rip saw. It's got 20 feet per inch, a little bit finer, so it's not going to cut it as fast as the Lai Nielsen um, dovetail saw, but it should have a very fine cut because it's got a uh, 0.13 curve, whereas the, the line Nielsen, I believe, is a 0.15. So we should see a really clean, thin cut with this one. Not as fast, but let's see what the cut comes out like. So, 
Look at that. There you go. And that's the Veritas Jets style rip saw. I don't know if my it's not focusing here too much, but uh, really nice and clean. All all of the saws are working really nice, but you can see that the line Nelson has a thicker curve, but boy. Boy, does it cut really nice. I mean, um, I could probably do a better demonstration if I was prepared to, but, you know, just wanted to do a quick demonstration on that. Now, the thing about these saws is, is uh, the Veritas, uh, just to do a quick comparison, is uh, it took a little while to break this in. Um, the manual says something about kind of just going over a sharpening stone like that and so the teeth uh, because of the way the teeth are ground out of the factory or whatever um, I did that very carefully very lightly just the minimal needed um, but before that I made a few cuts and it was uh, hard to get started after that it kind of started smoother after I got used to the saw I wasn't really too fond of this handle but they didn't have the uh, They didn't have this style in stock. Um, and this is the cross cut saw. Curiously, this here, um, though it's a cross cut, it's only got 16 TPI. This here is the rip saw, it's got 22 TPI. Now, funny thing I noticed about this uh, Veritas cross cut saw, is watch this. No crosscut saws aren't for ingrain, but wow, look at that, you know, pretty cool. Nevertheless, um, to be honest with you, I'm being perfectly honest here with no preference. I mean, you can see I'm a big fan of Veritas alone, I own a lot of their saws. Um, when I, I made two cuts with the line Nielsen so far, as you saw after I unboxed it, and just right away I could tell how great that thing cuts how clean now you aren't going to get these cuts off of the veritas saws right away it's going to take a little while to get used to them they're not exactly easy to get started that's one thing second is uh <clears throat> you know um i kind of uh i'm different i always do everything with left or right hand so you know it doesn't uh bother me to switch hands so um, as you can see, I get good cuts, good straight cuts on either hand. Um, but in any case, it does take some getting used to, and I wasn't able to cut that cleanly or quickly or straight when I first got them. It took a, it took a few days to really get the feel for it. Um, one of the things about these gents handles is that uh, they're not... They're more awkward than the Japanese saws. Now the Japanese saws also have straight handles, but you're pulling with them. A lot of control you can get with this type of handle. I love this type of handle. However, when you're pushing with a handle like this, it's a lot less control because what the first thing is you have to overcome the tendencies you have. Some people may have a tendency to put their palm on here and kind of give it something to to come up against when you're cut. That'll screw up your cut. Um, a lot of people want to stick their finger out like that, but what happens is you've only got three fingers here holding this little bitty handle, and you're not really getting a good balance. So what I find is kind of like a halfway between. As long as I keep my finger kind of about right there, it helps me from turning it. And one thing you'll do real quick is damage this 
you'll bend this blade here real quick if you use any force and it turns on you and that's one of the problems with this handle it likes to turn when you cut with it I learned that very quick but luckily I was very careful with the way that I had handled this saw so it didn't damage it but it was really hard to get used to um, that but once I got the hang of it I cut really fast with this uh, pretty quick and very clean as you see but uh, you know let's take a look now at the Lai Nielsen handle here okay uh, maple whereas the Veritas is made of a binga. Now, something you don't really see here, I don't know if you can see it in the picture, but a pretty good chunk of this handle broke off the very first day I got it. It was a beautiful saw, but all I did was it kind of just dropped on the floor and it just chipped right off. I put some epoxy and glued it back, and now it looks kind of like a scar, but. Um, Kind of a fragile handle I guess in a way I, I can't drop them I've dropped this one it hasn't broken I've dropped a lot of other saws but for whatever reason this babinga um, chipped pretty easily it didn't even drop it from very far but let's take a look at the handles here how they compare I guess they're relatively about the same size but if you notice the light Nielsen at the outset looks smaller but in reality as you can see here, okay, the the actual grip gives you, act, even though it's a little bit smaller, I guess overall in visual appearance, the actual grip is a little bit bigger because see, the wood here is thicker, and you got a little bit of a, or I don't know if it's because it's thicker, but uh, yeah, I suppose so. But it's just a little bit more room in your palm than on this one, even though this one looks bigger. And also, four fingers here are very snug. Four fingers on this one aren't too bad because right here, for whatever reason, it just seems like it gives you more room. So this is a really, really comfortable saw. Wow, really neat. Um, another thing that's great about it now I know people have complained about these uh, composite uh, backs that Veritas uses this is some kind of a metal slash plastic of some sort or something um, I have no problem with it I like it just fine and it's got a little weight to it so I mean I think people complaining about that probably just like the metal ones better i don't think there's really a legitimate complaint with this kind of handle here except i don't know maybe uh one thing i could tell right here is that the line nielsen has these two screws or bolts that look like you hold it in place this one here is molded i guess if i dropped this one or damaged the blade somehow i could it looks like i'd be able to replace it whereas this one here you're out of luck you're not going to be able to replace the blade it's molded in here the handles uh, stuck to it oh well it's got a screw but you know I mean I suppose the only thing you could do is either replace this or that I don't know if they would sell you the part or what but this looks like you could probably just uh, do the same here but I don't know I mean uh, I don't know what the companies will the manufacturers will accommodate as far as replacing parts but this has got the brass back nice little weight to it it's not really too much heavier but there's a little bit different weight and it's got a thicker curve so you, of course you're gonna have more weight now the maple has a smoother feel to it although this is finished very nicely the maple just has a real nice smooth feel to it you feel more weight here on the handle on this saw than you do on this one and that could account for why the Lai Nielsen felt a little bit easier to start than the other soles were when I first got them. So, I don't know. Um, need to play with this for a little bit before I can give you a real good 
analysis, but I think uh, you got the idea pretty well here. So, my Nelson 15 PPI tapered dove cell saw. Pretty awesome. All right, I just wanted to show you real quick um, this, uh, got kind of this piece of figured ash I'm making a uh, dovetailed cabinet with. And uh, I'm gonna show you the first time ever using this saw. Uh, never used this before except to do the, to do the test cuts I showed you. But this is what my first dovetail uh, cuts look like on this um, board here. Um, I don't think the picture shows it as good as it actually looks uh, from here, but uh, the, the cuts are really clean, really square. I mean, wow. I've never used it. I'm, I'm, when I There's a little bit of, uh, like right here, there's a little bit of fuzz or something, uh, you know. And that's really, that really kind of comes from uh, not having a feel for it. And also um, checking my pins. When I push my pins in here, I push these a little bit here because they're kind of tight. But as you can see, wow, I mean, these uh, these cuts are really nice and square. And I'm really uh, impressed with how, how well I was able to cut with this saw. I mean, um, both ends, I mean, were really, really nice and, and tight. That is what it looks like. Um, as I'm looking at the screen, it seems to look more flawed than, well, I wouldn't say flawed, but it doesn't look as crisp as it does when I'm looking at it, straight at it, not through the screen. But um, not that I'm trying to fool you or anything, but I mean, it really is real nice and crisp, sharp, clean, flat lines. I mean, you can just tell. I don't know if maybe a different angle might help. But I think it has something to do also with the uh, the fish eye kind of thing with the lens. It kind of I don't know. Maybe it makes the spacing look a little weird or something. But uh, yeah. So. And it didn't take long. It didn't take long at all to cut with this thing. I mean, just... <laughs> and these are kind of small dovetails, small pins that are going to go in them. And I would say probably took... I don't know... Maybe 15 minutes. 10 minutes to cut all these down. Uh, of course, I had to pair them out with the chisel. Um, and a coping saw but uh, that took more time but I mean it didn't take any it cuts pretty quick uh, and just in case you're wondering about these here these were actually longer panels I was going to use for another project and these are my little FF biscuits for my plate joiner that uh, so when I cut them down to dimension I had to cut into the plate biscuits a little bit um, I only use plate only use biscuits, uh, plate biscuits. Did I say plate biscuits? I meant <laughs> joinery biscuits or joinery plates. If I said plate biscuits, then I didn't mean to say it's stupid. But anyway, my little joinery biscuits here. I only use these to glue up panels. I don't use them for any kind of joinery. Uh, I really hate it, personally. I mean, I don't want to put anybody else's work down. I hate using them for anything but alignment. Um, for joinery, to me, it's just kind of what's the point of learning all the woodworking techniques if you're going to join something with the biscuits. But in any case, that's what that's for if you're wondering. 
sticks out a little here, but this is all going to be uh, sanded and dyed down. I mean, stained and uh, sanded, so this won't even be visible by the time I'm done. But uh, the dovetails came out really nice. I can't wait to show you this cabinet once I'm finished. Um, yeah, I don't know if the figure is showing right now, but once I get uh, once I get some polyurethane on here, I think some of these grains, uh, some of this kind of flame here will, will come out uh, better. Right now the lighting isn't so good, it kind of gives it, you can't really see the dimension I guess, maybe not on this camera, but so anyway, uh, long story short. First time cutting dovetails with the Line Nielsen um, tapered dovetail saw. And as you can see, I mean, really, really good. And, and I'm certainly no pro. I mean, I've only been woodworking for four or five months. So, I mean, considering my, my vast inexperience, <laughs> all right. It, the saw really helps get good dovetails. Thanks for watching.